we have come to a point where we can't assume how civilizations are going to be in the future. Join me as I explain the Kardashev scale. The Kardashev scale ranks the technological capabilities of a civilization according to the energy it is able to manipulate and exploit. The scale was invented in 1964 by the Russian astronomer Nikolai Semenkovich Kardashev, who was looking for signs of extraterrestrial life within cosmic signals, and proposed a scale for ranking these hypothetical civilizations based on their energy consumption. So the Kardashev scale was developed as a way of measuring a civilization's technological advancement based upon how much usable energy it has at its disposal. The scale has three types that follow the scale of astrophysical structures in our local universe. The basic calibration is based on three energy positions on the scale corresponding to the ability to fully manage the energy resources of an inhabited planet, type 1, the star of the respective solar system, type 2, and its galaxy, type 3. Other astronomers have expanded the scale to Type 4 and Type 5. Samples of civilizations that could correspond to the Kardashev scale are both terrestrial and other supposedly extraterrestrial civilizations. Due to the fact that the American astronomer and astrophysicist Carl Sagan wanted to classify our current civilization, he noticed that we are not Type 1 yet, and he explained and calibrated the scale before Type 1. The reason why human race is not even on type 1 yet is because we continue to maintain our energy needs from dead plants and animals here on Earth. We are just a humble culture, type 0, and we still have a very long distance to go before promoted to a type 1 civilization. According to Carl Sagan, in 1900, during the Industrial Revolution period, our terrestrial civilization was at 0.58 while in 2012 it was at 0.72 on the scale. Freeman Dyson estimated that we will probably reach type 1 in 100 to 200 years, type 2 in the year 11,200, and type 3 in 100,000 to 1 million years. Before we continue with our explanation of the Kardashev scale, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Now let's examine on a closer look some features of the four energy positions. What does each of these categories really mean in literal terms? Type 0 A Type 0 civilization is based on energy which can derive mainly from sources where energy forms are mildly stored and are found before the specific type 1, 2, 3. Our culture today belongs to Type 0 which uses sources such as coal, oil, or natural gas. As we mentioned before, it is understood that we have not reached Type 1 in the Kardashev scale yet. Type 1 A Type 1 civilization has complete control over the energy of its host planet. As a Type 1 civilization, we would be capable of controlling Earth entirely. So this civilization has managed to tame and consume the energy offered to it by its own planet, which it fully controls. It would, for example, be capable of collecting all the starlight that falls on the planet. However, the ability to harness all of the Earth's energy would also mean that we could have control of all natural forces. The temperature, the climate of the planet could be controlled in the same way that we could control volcanoes, weather conditions, and even earthquakes. It is possible that weather or even earthquakes can be changed at will by this civilization, so we could influence the nature. At least, that's the basic idea. These things are hard to believe, but compared to the advances that can be made in the coming years, imagine that these are just basic and primitive levels of control. Type 2 The next step, a Type 2 civilization. This is the next stage in the evolution of a civilization. At this level, the inhabitants who make up such a civilization can harness the power of their mother's star, their sun, not only by turning the light of the star into energy, but by controlling the star itself. It would control the orbit of all planets in that system, harvest asteroids and comets at its leisure, and basically consume the entire solar system. For example, if humans survived long enough to reach this level, and an object the size of the moon entered our solar system with a collision course with our little blue planet, we would have the ability to wipe it out from the ground. Or if we had time, we could move our planet, 
avoiding it altogether. But let's just say we didn't want to move the Earth. Are there any other options? Well, yes, because we'd be able to move the planet, Jupiter, or another planet of our choice on its way. Isn't that amazing? So we go from controlling a planet to controlling a star, which will lead us to gather enough expendable energy to make our civilization virtually immune to extinction. It is important to mention that the energy it consumes is 10 billion times more than the energy produced by a civilization type 1. Type 3 But now, in addition to type 3 culture, a species is now becoming an intergalactic traveler with great knowledge of all those who have to do with energy, and that will result in the domination of its species, making it a dominant race. A type 3 civilization would span the entire galaxy, colonizing and controlling numerous systems. From a human point of view, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, both biological and technological, can lead the inhabitants of this type 3 culture to be incredibly different from the human race as we know it. A type 3 civilization controls energy at a galactic level in its entire galaxy and may have decimated one or more neighboring galaxies. Such a civilization has reached a level of energy experimentation even with black holes. He can travel in the space and time within the same place and has the ability to escape in the past in case the heat of death is caused in his life. Similarly, the energy it consumes is 10 billion times more than the energy that is produced by a Type 2 civilization. Type 4 Type 4 is a scale extension. This civilization would be supergalactic, able to travel throughout the entire universe and consume the energy output of several, possibly all galaxies. Zoltan Galanti has defined a theoretical extension of the scale with a Type 4 civilization that is in the best place in the world that can control the energy of the whole visible world, possibly the dark matter. He may be able to travel to other universes or send information to them so that a Type 0 culture can develop, with a view to developing into a Type 1 culture. Such civilization is approaching or exceeding even the exotic limits of scientific imagination based on our current scientific knowledge and may be impossible to exist. The scientist himself has agreed that such a civilization would not be detectable as its actions would not differ from the very natural processes. The scientist Michio Keiku in his book Parallel Worlds has given an alternate definition to Type 4 thus naming the civilization that can control galactic energy sources such as the so-called dark energy. One possible way of fully collecting the energy from an astronomer is thought to be the Dyson Sphere. The sphere is a hypothetical megastructure that encloses a star and accumulates the energy that the star emits. The concept of this construction was originally developed by the science fiction writer Olaf Stapleton in his novel Star Maker in 1937. While later the idea was promoted and became more widely known by the physicist Freeman Dyson in a study he carried out in 1960, entitled Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation. Dyson estimated that the existence of such structures would be the logical consequence of the growing needs of a technological culture for energy and the necessity of ensuring its long-term survival. He also suggested that the search for such structures could lead to the discovery of sophisticated and intelligent alien life forms. There could be different types of spheres and their energy absorption capacity would correspond to the technological development levels of the Kardashev scale. The various types of similar devices which aim to directly exploit stars and store their energy are called Dyson bullets, with some of these hypothetical proposals extending to the ability of inhabitation or developing an industry in these constructions. Most ideas are represented as a shell that surrounds a star, but there are also versions where the device is a ring or battery arrays. Experts claim that as a culture develops and becomes more advanced, its energy needs will increase rapidly due to the population growth and the energy requirements of its various machines. With this in mind, the Kardashev scale has been developed as a way of measuring the technological progress of a culture based on how much usable energy is at its disposal. Let's consider on a deeper level the transition from Type 0 to Type 1 civilization. Will we make it? 
As we mentioned before, we can't calculate and when we will attain type 1 and the answer is in approximately 100 years. And we will be able to play with weather conditions, earthquakes, volcanoes and anything planetary. But the period of transition from type 0 to 1 culture is considered the most critical and dangerous in the scale due to the fact that we have chemical biological weapons capable of wiping out life on Earth. Also, we have not developed sufficient collective intelligence and the use of new powers can completely obliterate this culture before it completes the full transition to type 1. Nuclear, biological, geophysical weapons of mass destruction, unchecked rise in the temperature of the planet, destruction of natural protective mechanisms such as magnetosphere, ozone layer, etc. Let's now see things from another point of view. There are some evidence that we are closer than we think to achieve type 1. For instance, for human civilization on Earth, signs of transition to type 1 civilization from type 0 are considered to be the taming of nuclear energy, globalization efforts in technology, language, culture, the political system, successful earthquake prediction, and causing earthquakes. Also something that consumes a lot of our time and energy, the internet. It's something that we all use in our daily lives and it is a significant part of us. But for scientists, internet is something more than that. It is an important clue that we are in the beginning of type 1. We will be privileged to be alive to witness the birth of type 1. We will be part of making history and exploring new horizons that we have no idea that exist. What keeps us interesting and at the same time is fascinating in the Kardashev scale is the fact that what we see on TV series, well-known movies, can come true in the future. It is not only sci-fi but a very serious scenario to happen. It is where imagination meets reality. And don't you think it is something remarkable to notice? Now that we know about the Kardashev scale and we know for sure that we are reaching type 1 with examples from our daily life. I think we can see our very daily routine with more gratitude and it doesn't matter that we won't be able to reach the final point of the scale as the fact itself that we have thought and dreamed of this to happen can fill us with joy. Thanks for watching everyone. I would really like to know your opinion regarding the Kardashev scale. Do you agree with these types? Do you think that we are approaching type 1 civilization? Would you like to witness this? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.